Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Myself, Kaji Salahuddin, TA of this course called Design of Fixed Wing UAV. Today we will discuss some assignments problem. Uh, I hope you got the assignment 1, 2, 3 and 4. So today we will discuss about the assignments problems. Later we have made some more problem. So in next tutorial we will discuss some more problem. So let us start with the assignment 1. In question 1 you have to answer the following question. The unmanned aircraft can be classified based on the first option was size of the unmanned aircraft, weight of the unmanned aircraft and third one was the mode of operation and fourth one is the all of this. So by seeing the question you can directly say that and second question was the endurance of the aircraft depends upon the. So first option was payload carrying capacity of the unmanned, unmanned aircraft. So obviously you know that if suppose that payload of the aircraft is increasing then total weight of the aircraft will increase so obviously it will depend on parameter and aerodynamics of the unmanned aircraft uh, already you have seen sir thought that ki aerodynamic efficiency l by d ratio so this one also depends upon the uh, endurance of the unmanned aircraft and third one was the atmospheric condition so you know at a lower altitude like sea level density is 1.2256 kg per meter cube when you go above the sea level the density will decrease so the endurance will depend depends upon the speed and which is speed is related to the density and in the third question the variation of the properties in the standard atmosphere are calculated based on the assumptions so here is the assumption is taken g equal to constant because if you wrote this equation dp equal to minus rho g dh so this is the hydrostatic equation based on then you drive the P2 by P1 ratio, T2 by T1 ratio and rho 2 by rho 1 ratio. In this equation G assumed to be constant because if you, if you didn't assume the G equal to constant means here will be the two variable, G also will be the variable and H also will be the variable. So this is a multi integration. So it will be the complicated one so that's why we assume the G equal to constant. And we also know that ki, uh, about uh, 0 to 30 kilometer or 32 kilometer the G variation of G is almost negligible. It is 9.81. So only some 2 or 3 percent change will be there. So based on that you can also say that G is a constant. So if you take G equal to constant it will be very easy to drive the pressure ratio, temperature ratio and density ratio. And in fourth question. Uh, the question was the high altitude long endurance unmanned air vehicle is flying at an altitude of 17 km of geopotential altitude. When you say that the geopotential altitude means you are, you are getting the altitude by keeping the g equal to constant. So you have to find the density at that particular altitude. So the altitude is given 17 km so you can use the density ratio formula. So you know that ki from 0 to 11 kilometer the variation will be the different and from 11 to uh, 20 kilometer the variation will be different. So first you have to calculate the density at the 11 kilometer because suppose that uh, the question suppose that if, if the question is find the altitude at the 10 kilometer then the reference will be the density at the sea level. But here the question is you have to find the cal, uh, you have to find the density at seven, 17 kilometer. So you cannot take the reference as a sea level. First you have to find the density at the 11 kilometer. You have to take that reference and then you will go to the el uh, density at the 17 kilometer altitude. So let us see uh, you have, uh, we will solve this problem. So you know suppose that this is a density at 11 kilometer and density at sea level. So this will be nothing but 
टेम्परेचर एट द इलेवन किलोमीटर टेम्परेचर एट द सी लेवल सर ऑलरेडी ड्राइव दिस थिंग्स इन प्रीवियस लेक्चर जी डिवाइडेड बाई लेमडा आर प्लस वन सो आर इज द गैंस कॉन्स्टेंट टू एट्टी सेवन लेमडा इज द लेफ्ट रेट दिस डिपेंड्स अपॉन द विच लेयर आर यू इन इन विच लेयर यू आर कैलकुलेटिंग दिस डेंसिटी रेशियो और प्रेशर रेशियो सो अगेन दिस टेम्परेचर यू कैन फाइंड यूजिंग दिस रिलेशन टी इलेवन इक्वल टू टी नॉट माइनस लेमडा एच इफ यू फॉन्ट इफ यू वॉन्ट टू फाइंड द टेम्परेचर एट इलेवन किलोमीटर यू हैव टू पुट द एल्टीट्यूड इलेवन किलोमीटर लेमडा इज ए माइनस सिक्स पॉइंट फाइव एंड टी नॉट इज ए सी लेवल टेम्परेचर टू एट्टी एट पॉइंट वन सिक्स सो इफ यू कैलकुलेट दिस थिंग्स दिस विल कम्स अराउंड टू एट्टी एट पॉइंट वन सिक्स माइनस सिक्स पॉइंट फाइव इन टू इलेवन सो आई एम पुटिंग दिस वैल्यू डायरेक्टली इन टू दिस इक्वेशन सो इट विल बी द इजी वन टाइम कैलकुलेशन सो टू एटी एट पॉइंट वन सिक्स माइनस सिक्स पॉइंट फाइव इन टू इलेवन दिस विल बी द टेम्परेचर एट इलेवन किलोमीटर डिवाइडेड बाई टेम्परेचर एट सी लेवल टू एटी एट पॉइंट वन सिक्स एंड दिस द इंडेक्स विल बी माइनस नाइन पॉइंट एट वन इन टू थाउजेंड थाउजेंड वी आर मल्टीप्लाइंग बिकॉज ऑफ यू हैव दिस इज इन केलविन कल पर किलोमीटर एंड जी यूनिट इज मीटर पर सेकेंड स्क्वायर तो यू हैव टू कन्वर्ट ऑल दिस इन टू एस आई यूनिट सिक्स पॉइंट फाइव इन टू टू एट्टी सेवन प्लस वन and minus will be there so this things will comes out 0.75187 and this value will come out to be 4.25864 so this will be the density ratio 11 किलोमीटर बाय सी लेवल सो सी लेवल डेंसिटी यू नो इज 1.2256 पॉइंट टू टू फाइव सिक्स के जी पर मीटर क्यूब सो वेन यू सॉल्व दिस फाइनली यू विल गेट द डेंसिटी एट 11 किलोमीटर विल कम आउट 0.36382 पॉइंट थ्री सिक्स थ्री एट टू के जी पर मीटर क्यूब so this is this was the very straight forward question but uh, you have to uh, keep in mind that ki you cannot find the density at uh, 17 km using that using this formula so first you have calculated this 11 km using this you will go to the 17 km so generally people do the mistake in directly here they can put the t17 and directly you can find the t uh, directly they used to find the temperature at 17 km if you do this then it will be the wrong so just only you have to take care one things you cannot find the temperature uh, density at directly temperature density or uh, this pressure and density direct at 17 km first you go to the 11 km then you will find it so we have the value row 11 km so next we will go to the row 17 km so you know that uh, from 11 to 17 or 11 to 20 or 11 to 22 uh, this formula you have to use in this region the temperature will be the constant so temperature ratio and pressure ratio will be the same and this will be g r t 11 you have to take the temperature at 11 km and h 17 km and h 11 km now you are going from 11 11 to 17 so you know the value of 
रो सेवेंटी रो एलेवन किलोमीटर हेयर यू गॉड दिस विल बी जीरो पॉइंट थ्री सिक्स थ्री एट टू एंड यू नो दिस वैल्यू नाइन पॉइंट एट वन टू एट्टी सेवन एंड टेम्परेचर एट एलेवन किलोमीटर टू वन सिक्स पॉइंट सिक्स सिक्स एंड दिस इज सेवेंटीन माइनस एलेवन किलोमीटर देन यू हैव टू मल्टीप्लाई बाई टेन पावर थ्री टू कन्वर्ट इट टू मीटर सो रो सेवेंटीन यू कैन कैलकुलेट यूजिंग दिस सो दिस विल कम आउट जीरो पॉइंट वन फोर वन थ्री नाइन फोर के जी पर मीटर क्यू दिस विल बी दर फाइनल आंसर सो बाय सॉल्विंग दिस यू हैव टू टेक केयर द टू पार्ट्स यू कैन नॉट कैलकुलेट द डेंसिटी एट सेवेंटी किलोमीटर डायरेक्टली सेकेंड वन थिंग्स लाइक द अप्रॉक्सीमेट सोल्यूशन सो ड्यूरिंग द इंटरमीडिएट स्टेप यू हैव टू टेक द एटलीस्ट फाइव डिजिट at least five digits so that finally you will get the accurate answer if you take two digit then this will give the error also and finally if you put that then uh, then the error will come so your approx solution will not be the approximate so at least you take five digit so and uh, in the fifth question uh, the high altitude long endurance unmanned air vehicle is flying at an altitude of 15 km of geopotential altitude the true speed in meter per second at that altitude will be nearest to so here you have uh, here the question was you have to find the true speed so true speed is basically at what speed the really the aircraft is flying with respect to the ground so generally suppose that you are flying at sea level so density is different when you will go to the above the sea level then density will be the different so at the same power you will get more speed so that is called true speed so how this density plays the major important role to for the true speed we will see uh, using this example problem generally in true speed uh, there is a, means you can do the mistake like you can put the density at sea level then that will not be the true speed that will be the equivalent speed so we will show you the difference between these two speed using the next problem and in fifth question some additional data is also there which is total pressure sensed by pitot tube which is 0.13767762 into 10 power 5 newton per meter square uh, suppose that aircraft flying is a particular speed so in pitot tube if you bring the flow to zero isentropically isentropically means you are not adding any heat and you are not removing the heat from the system so if you put the flow isentropically zero you will get one pressure that is p not so if you are not adding any heat and if you are not removing any heat during this process then you can write this relation p not equal to p plus half rho v square so you have p not and you have to find the speed at 17 km so you have to find this two value pressure and density so this will be the 17 km and this will be the 17 km so using stedden formula i have shown one example to you how to find the density so density you know at the 17 km what will be the density and uh, density ratio and 
pressure ratio will be the same like P17 by P11 equal to rho 17 by rho 11 this will be the same because from 11 to 17 kilometer temperature will be the constant so if you rose P equal to rho RT and if you make two equation from this equation like P17 equal to rho 17 RT 17 and P11 equal to rho 11 RT 11 if you divide these two equations then this T17 and T11 will be the same so you will get this so you know this ratio to from the previous question you know the P11 you can find the P11 so using this you can find the static pressure at the 17 kilometer so from this if you manipulate this equation you will get Vt equal to under root 2 P0 minus P at 17 kilometer divided by rho at 17 kilometer. So you have used the Bernoulli equation to find the true speed but generally people do the mistake they put the density at sea level so that will be the equivalent speed so your answer will be the wrong. So you can see that ki if the density if your density will decrease then speed will increase means you are decreasing uh, you are, if you are going above the sea level your true speed automatically will increase so this is the significance of these things so Yes. So this two ratio you know and if you calculate P17 Okay in this question you have to find the to speed at 15 kilometer so in last question we have solved the density at uh, 15 kilometer so you can find the density at 15 kilometer also and pressure at 15 kilometer also using the standard formula So to find the density at 15 kilometer again you have to use the density at 11 kilometer which you got in earlier question. So using this you can find the value of density at 15 kilometer which will be comes 0 0.212091 kg per meter cube and P15 will be Zero point one two zero three two two into ten power five Newton per meter square. So in this equation you can put see total pressure is already given zero point one three seven six seven two minus 0 0.120322 into 10 power 5 divided by 0 0.212091 so this will be sum of can get the speed 128 sum of get 129 I am getting 128 meter per second. So, this depends upon the 
at what digit you are taking the density and, and the pressure. So this speed will be the 128 meter per second. So the purpose is to know this key, this formula you know, but what is the significance of this where you can do the mistake and all. So you have to just remember this thing. You have to calculate the pressure at 15 kilometer, density at 15 kilometer. Then only you can find the true speed at uh, 15 kilometer. So this is the, and if you decrease the density, then the true speed will increase. And uh, uh, this equation is valid for the Mach number when point less than three in compressible flow. So you, this thing you have to keep in mind. And uh, the sixth question was, the sixth question was the temperature ratio as 17 kilometer and 13 kilometer. So we, you know that ki at, from 11 kilometer to approximately 20 kilometer, the, this is the isothermal layer. So in, in that, the temperature remains constant. So by uh, if you take the ratio like 13 kilometer to 17 or 17 to 15 or 15 to 16 the temperature if the temperature is same then the ratio will be the one so without solving this you can mark this uh, you can solve this problem so the answer will be the one and similarly the density ratio at 20 kilometer and 11 kilometer so first you have to find the density at 11 kilometer using the standard formula because you know that key from 0 to 11 kilometer the formula will be different to calculate the pressure ratio, temperature ratio and density ratio and from 11 kilometer to 20 kilometer again the formula will be different. So you have to keep in mind that key how this uh, uh, where we have to use the correct formula. So using the um, standard formula you can find the temperature density ratio at 20 kilometer and 11 kilometer. This is question 7. I am not solving this. I am you can solve this using first you have to find the density at 11 kilometer that you know already. So you can see that the data which you solve for the ideal question like same data you are using for the next question. So you have to find the density ratio at 11 kilometer to 20 kilometer that is course. density ratio at 11 kilometer and 20 kilometer and 11 kilometer. So you know the density is at 11 kilometer is 0 0.36382 kg per meter cube. This is the, your one density. You, you can find the density at 20 kilometer. So you have to find the pressure ratio means, means P20 by P11 you have to find. So you can find the P10, sorry. So you can find the pressure at 20 kilometer, uh, first pressure at 10 kilometer and then using uh, this you can find the pressure at 20 kilometer and you can divide. So first you have to find the individually P10 and P20. So first we will go to the P10. So P10 for this you have to use the reference C level, P C level. So P20, P10 and by P level is T10 divided by T at C level. This will be the minus G divided by lambda R. So, so 288.16 minus 6.5 and you have to multiply by the altitude 10 divided by 288.16 and this index will be the 9.81 this is kelvin per kilometer then it will go to the 1000 will go to the meter if you convert into the from kilometer to meter 6.5 with minus sign they will come and 287. So, and 
एट सी लेवल यू नो वन बार वन पॉइंट जीरो वन थ्री टू फाइव इंटू टेन पावर फाइव न्यूटन पर मीटर स्क्वायर यू कैन पुट दिस वैल्यू एंड यू कैन कैलकुलेट द पी टेन सो योर पी टेन विल बी द जीरो पॉइंट टू सिक्स फोर वन एट फोर वन एट नाइन इंटू टेन पावर फाइव न्यूटन पर मीटर स्क्वायर सो दिस विल बी द योर पी एट टेन किलोमीटर सो यू गॉट पी एट टेन किलोमीटर सो अवर नेक्स्ट स्टेप इज टू कैलकुलेट द प्रेशर एट टेन टू किलोमीटर देन फाइनली वी विल डिवाइड दिस टू वी विल गेट वी विल रीच अवर आंसर so here you can use some tricks or you can find the individual at p at 11 km so you have to find the value of p at 20 km so p at 20 km you can find using this p 20 by p 11 will be the rho 20 by rho 11 i am not using p10 because this two ratio will be the same na so you can directly use this data from the previous equation so what will be the p20 will be p11 divided by rho 20 by rho 11 so you no need to calculate again you uh, you, you no, no, no need to calculate the p20 individual like using the formula p20 by p11 p10 equal to minus c to the power minus grt h2 minus s1 or h20 minus h10 so you using this trick you can find the value of p20 easily using the previous data because you know the ratio will be the same so this value you know that ki rho 20 by rho 11 you got from question number 7 and from question number 5 you got the p11 0.22 into 10 power 5 and your density ratio will be 0.25 9092 so your p20 will be the 0.058595 into 10 power 5 newton per meter square so you have to pressure p20 and p10 here so you can divide this to you will get the answer and your answer will be p20 by p11 here you can write p20 by p20 by p10 is 0.2279 so you can save some of your some of your time to using this trick and uh, the 10th question Uh, the ninth question was a uh, high altitude long endurance and many aerial is flying at an altitude of 15 km of geopersonal altitude the pressure at that altitude will be nearest to so you have to find the pressure at 15 km so you can find the pressure at 11 km then from 11 km you can go to the 15 km so at the 11 km the at the 15 km the pressure will be i am not solving this problem because uh, in in many of question we have used the standard this formula so you have to put just the value and to get the answer so so if you find the pressure at 15 km it will be come out 0.13 1 8 3 9 into 10 power 5 newton 
पर मीटर स्क्वायर सो यू कैन सी द सोल्यूशन ऑफ फाइव यू विल गेट द आइडिया ऑफ हाउ टू गेट द डायरेक्टली द प्रेशर एट फिफ्टीन किलोमीटर सो नो नीड टू सॉल्व अगेन एंड द लास्ट क्वेश्चन वॉज द वैल्यू ऑफ जियो जियोमेट्रिक एल्टीट्यूड इन किलोमीटर एट विच द डिफरेंस बिटवीन द जियो पोटेशन एल्टीट्यूड एंड जियोमेट्रिक एल्टीट्यूड एंड जियो पोटेशन एल्टीट्यूड इज इक्वल टू द वन परसेंट सो बेसिकली इन दिस क्वेश्चन द क्वेश्चन वॉज जस्ट टू गिव द आइडिया ऑफ द डिफरेंस बिटवीन द जियोमेट्रिक एल्टीट्यूड एंड जियो पोटेशन एल्टीट्यूड कि ओके इफ यू आर गोइंग अबव द सी लेवल देन हाउ हाउ मच इट विल अफेक्ट मीन्स is there same for every altitude means geopotential and geometric or it will be the different so the tenth question was the value of geometric altitude in kilometer at which the difference between the geometric altitude and geopotential altitude is equal to the 1% of geopotential altitude so in this you know uh, in from the statement you can write that they have said that h difference of geometric altitude and geometric geometric altitude is 1% 1% of geopotential altitude 1% of geopotential altitude so this is equation 1 and uh, you know that the relation between geometric altitude and geopotential altitude is h equal to hg r divided by r plus hg r is the radius of earth 6400 km so if you rearrange this things then you will get if you manipulate this equation equation number 2 you will get hg by r equal to hg minus h divided by h because you have to bring this equation in this form so that you can put the this value into directly this and you can cal calculate this so if you put this value 0.01 and r is 6400 i have, uh, we have taken the correct value of r which is 6378.14 km so your geopotential altitude will be hg equal to 6378.14 sir sir already explained about this things the different uh, this about the significance and physical feel and, uh, and meaning of this geopotential altitude and geopotential altitude so this is the one numerical where you can see that the geopotential altitude is coming 63.78 so you can say that ki okay which altitude will be the greater means for each and every altitude hg will be the greater or h will be the greater so you can see that ki hg is if you put this thing you can say 0.01 h plus h 1.01 h hg so if you put hg value here 63.4 the h value will be the less than that of hg value so hg will be the always greater than of h at the sea level uh, it will be the same but when you go above the sea level the difference will come so using this you can say that so this this was about the assignment 1
So, we will go to the assignment 2 also. So, if you have any doubt regarding this, any steps or things you can post directly into the forum, we will give the answer. So, in assignment 2, first question, an unmanned air vehicle with mass of 700 kg and wing area of 12.47 is flying in cruise at a speed of 40 meter per second. The air vehicle trim lift coefficient at mean sea, mean sea level. So, you have to find the CL value. CL trim is, trim is nothing but when the forces and moments are balanced then the aircraft is said to be the trim condition means there is a no rotation about the cg of the aircraft so there is so you can call it trim so basically the given information is mass of the aircraft which is 700 kg and wing area is 12.47 meter square and free steam velocity is 40 meter per second and you have to find the CL trim. This is at the mean sea level. So, you know that ki, okay, if the aircraft is cruising then the lift is the weight of the aircraft is balanced by exactly lift. So, using lift equal to weight which is half rho v square s into C L. So, 700, this is a weight, so Newton, so you have to convert into Newton. So, 700 into 9.81 equal to 1.2, 1 by 2 into 1.2256 into, a speed is given 40 meter per second. So, 40 square into area is 12.47 and CL trim. So, if you solve this, you will get CL trim equal to 0 0.56144. So, in this question basically the aircraft is flying without any rotation about CG at cruise condition. So, just you have to find the value of CL trim. So, based on that data you can see that ki which equation we have used. See in cruise condition if suppose that aircraft is cruising thrust is balanced by drag and lift is balanced by weight. So, which equation you will use. So, based on data you can use that okay we have to use this equation because weight is given, free steam velocity is given, area is given. So, all the thing is coming in this equations. So, only one parameter you have to find, then you can use this relation and you can find this. So, and second question is, so in second question, the question was you have to find the value of cm alpha in per radian at quarter quad point of thin airfoil and note uh, also you have given that ki CML is the first derivative of the pitching moment coefficient with respect to the angle of attack. So, this is just the introductory part of this like you can say stability and sir already told about that uh, I think in last lecture that ki what is CM alpha, what is CM naught, air curve, uh, what is air curve stability and how does CM alpha and CM naught plays the important role in longitudinal air curve stability. So, basically here there is the question which is given to, to solve this just to introduce the what is CM alpha. In this question you have to just the balance the moment and you will find this the answer. So, this is little bit tricky. So, you have to find the value of at quarter coin point. So, you know that uh, you have given the airfoil and also in this question it is mentioned that the 
air foil is thin then you can consider as a you cannot think about the this cambered air foil or uh, symmetrical air foil because in this question you no need to go about that deep level you you just draw the air foil and you just try to balance the moment and at what point it, you have to balance the moment then you will find the answer so in this question you have to find the suppose that this is the air foil and one lift force is acting in this direction and you have to balance the weight you, sorry you have to balance the moment so moment you can write same force into distance and if you take the first derivative of that then cm alpha will become cl alpha x bar minus x ac so this is basically this cl this cl first this cl is coming from the lift if you divide lift divided by half rho v square s this will be the your cl so first you take that this this lift and what will be the distance between this two point x bar minus x x ac this two point which i written here divide by this coefficient you will get cl take the derivative you will get cl alpha and here cm is what m divided by half rho v square s into c and c bar you can take here this is x bar means x by c and x bar ac means x ac by c so c will come here and if you take the derivative this will become cm alpha so basically this is the moment and this is the moment equal to force into distance and you and you you have you have asked to find the value of cm alpha at quarter quad means 1 by 4th 1 by 4th of this quad length so you know that this is also given quarter means 0.25 of quad x bar is already given to so x bar x by x bar is x by ac so which is given quarter quad point so 0.25 and you know that for a location of x ac is approximately at quarter quad point of the air foil means if you take if you have the quad length if you divide it by 4 that will be that will give the location of the aerodynamic center so this will be the also 2.5 so this is 2.5 this is for this is 0.25 and this is also 0.25 so this will be the zero so at the quarter quad point the cm alpha will be the zero so later sir will tell you about this key where the cm alpha will be the zero at the neutral point the cm alpha will be the zero and neutral point is the aerodynamic center of the whole aircraft sir will uh, explain you about this key uh, this cm alpha neutral point and uh, with the derivation also then you will get the feel for that ki, okay we, so basically you are here you are doing you are trying to find the cm alpha at aerodynamic center in the whole aircraft you will find the neutral point so neutral point will be the aerodynamic center of the whole craft so at neutral point the cm alpha will, will be the zero so you will get you can relate this to, uh, when you when sir will explain about you the neutral point then you can relate this to this then you will get the feel of okay the aerodynamic center of the wing is a uh, is equivalent to the neutral point of the whole aircraft so in in upcoming lecture sir will explain you very clearly this is just introduction and uh, in third question the maximum distance in percentage of maximum thickness of the airfoil between the mean camber line and cord line so in a symmetrical airfoil the mean camber line and cord line will be the coincide 
so if you taking this chord so mean so mean camber line will be the same as the chord line so by seeing this question itself you can say that the maximum distance or distance will be the zero or in whatever you can uh, with respect to the any percentage or anything so you can take so the straight forward answer will be the zero because mean camber line called line will coincide each other and uh, fourth question is which one correct about the aerodynamic center of the airfoil so basically at the you can see that at aerodynamic center the same alpha is zero means it is independent of angle of attack and to get the cm alpha you have to fix the velocity he means okay you are getting this cm at this particular velocity or uh, you are getting the moment at particular uh, with this with uh, fixed velocity if you change the velocity the moment will change so uh, so basically in this question uh, the first option was the aerodynamic center and pitching moment coefficient is independent of angle of attack so so see you have uh, we have seen that the cm alpha equal to 0 at aerodynamic center so by seeing this you can say that ki okay it is independent of angle of attack and uh, second and third uh, fourth option you can eliminate because third option was aerodynamic center varies with the variation of angle of attack and the location of aerodynamic center depends upon the camber of the airfoil so so by solving this we didn't consider anything we didn't think about that the camber and symmetrical things so this option also you can eliminate and the location of the center uh, center of vision depends upon the thickness of the fairfoil thickness we didn't also consider that okay we have we we no, we no need to worry about the thickness and all so the answer was the aerodynamic center uh, at aerodynamic center the pitching moment coefficient is independent of angle of attack because cm alpha at aerodynamic center will be the zero so in the fifth question the pitching moment coefficient about the leading edge of the airfoil is given by this expression so cm is given minus 0 0.15 plus 0 0.03 0 0.0315 alpha where alpha is the angle of attack of airfoil in degrees the trim of angle of attack of the airfoil in degrees will be so basically that for the trim the word trim is means that there is a no rotation about the cg of the aircraft means forces and moment are balanced so moment are balanced means you can put cm equal to 0 if cm equal to 0 means there is a no rotation about the cg means it is called trim condition so if you put cm equal to 0 you will get the alpha so basically this equation is given uh, sir will tell you about the explain the uh, uh, will explain about this significance of this equation that you can write cm is cm naught plus cm alpha into alpha so this is basically cm alpha and this is basically cm naught so for cm naught is negative unstable cm alpha is positive unstable sir will explain these things Sir already explained these things, the, the importance of CM0 and CN, CM alpha in aircraft stability, aircraft longitudinal stability. So here you can put CM equal to 0 because it is stream condition so you will get alpha value will be 4.7619 so in this question just you just understand what is trim if you know what is trim then you can say that ki, okay moment is balanced we have to put cm equal to 0 you will get alpha
and uh, six question you can easily solve by using the because we have given the enough hint so in this question by increasing or decreasing the free steam velocity the aerodynamic center will not change in this case the difference between the location of aerodynamic center in both cases will be the zero so whatever you in increase the speed suppose that aircraft is flying 20 meter per second if you increase the 40 meter per second the aerodynamic center is a fixed point it is not dependent upon the speed and all so in both the cases the aerodynamic center will be the same so so if you take the difference between both the cases then obviously it will be the zero like uh, cg when will vary when you change the weight cg will not vary will you increase or decrease the speed like aerodynamic also is the aerodynamic parameter which is not depend upon the speed and all so in Seventh question, the aspect ratio is given. Aspect ratio is given 10 and wing area is given also 10. So, you, using this aspect ratio equal to B square by S. So, B will be under root aspect ratio into S. So, aspect ratio is 10 area is 10 this will be the 10 meter so so you have to find the mean aerodynamic chord for the rectangular wing so in actually in rectangular wing what will be the taper ratio ct by cr so ct and cr will be the same for rectangular to so lambda will be the one so in this case the root chord tip chord and mean aerodynamic chord will be the same so basically you can use this formula as per ratio which is equal to b by c bar this is for rectangular wing only and this is for the generalized formula so people can do the mistake they can use this formula for the all the cases but this is not true this is valid for the rectangular wing only if you put s equal to b into c bar for rectangular wing this will come out to the b by c bar so as per ratio is 10 b is also 10 so from this you can see that 10 by 10 is 1 meter that only you have to find these things and uh, for the eighth question Again the lambda is given which is 0.5 which is CT by CR, tip chord by root chord and CT is given 1 meter. So CR you can find using this, CR will be the 1 divided by this 0.5 which will it will be the 2 meter. So first you have to find the after that you you just find the value of C, mean aerodynamic chord which will be 2 by 3 cr root chord 1 plus lambda plus lambda square divided by 1 plus lambda so this will be the 2 by 3 into 2 1 plus 0.5 plus 0.5 square 1 plus 0 0.5 this will be the C bar will be the 1.5555 meter. So, in this question, you have to find the distance between aerodynamic center of this wing with leading edge or nose. So, if you draw for to get the answer of this question, you have to draw this figure so that you can get feel this so what is given this was given 1 meter and using the data you found that the root chord will be this chord root chord cr is 2 meter 
so this thing you know you draw this and you also find the mean ergonomic chord somewhere located here in approximately which is 1.55 this is c bar so basically you have to find the aerodynamic center of this wing from the nose you can say this is nose or leading edge this is nose so you know that the aerodynamic center for the subsonic wing uh, subsonic if you are if your flight is subsonic then you can approximate the aerodynamic location will be the 0.25 of the mean aerodynamic chord but this distance will be from here not from here and it is asking that ki you have to find the distance between nose and aerodynamic center so you have to add this distance also so to get this distance what you will do you can subtract cr minus c bar so cr minus c bar if you will subtract cr minus c bar sometimes i use capital r small r it will be the same so cr minus c bar will be the this distance this distance you have to add this much distance this much distance because this is the location of aerodynamic center you can get by dividing c bar by 4 so this distance will be the c by 4 so this distance plus this distance will be the your answer so cr minus c will be the this distance c by 4 will be the this this distance So CR minus C will be come out 0.4444 or plus you know mean ergonomic chord 1.555 by 4. So the distance between the nose and aerodynamic center, this is your aerodynamic center, will be the you can consider as a x equal to 0.833. Three. So this will be the your answer. This is all about assignment two. So we will go for the assignment three also.